<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hi. Here we go. We're going to keep throwing some bowls today. Hello, so today we are gonna, I uh, got a few, throw a few more bowls, <laughs> hopefully 15 more before the end of the day. So we just thought we'd turn everything back on again since I had them on, since we had everything on earlier. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing, just chime on in. So here we go. Just throwing some simple bowl forms. That will sell to raise money for our soup kitchen on our campus. So that not our soup kitchen or um, the um, the food pantry. Sorry, the food pantry on my campus where students can come get food. So here we're going to use a rib here. Just rib that baby down. There we go. Go. Rip, rip, rip. Oh, I think we'll push this out a little bit more. There we go. Hey. There. Ah. Here we go. Ribbing out a little bit more. Yeah, that's a nice bowl. Pretty happy about that one. There we go. Finish up the rim. Huh, you just get up and walk away for a split second and all your tools are missing? Like, where did they go? So I need my, ah, oh, there she is, my clay knife. There we go, and then we'll undercut this guy. If you have any questions about what I'm doing or anything, just chime on in. This is John. My name is John. I teach ceramics classes, and I run the ceramic studio at Mount Hood Community College. I'm going to undercut this bad boy. Yeah, look at that. And then off she comes. Oops. Bowl number 16 for today. And then another chunker of clay. I think I can do it. I need to make, I wanted to make, my goal is to make 30 bowls today. So that was number 16 thrown. And then I still have to trim a bunch tomorrow. Probably took me, I don't know, because I was YouTubing that one and having that one on two on like streaming. So um took me some time. A little bit longer to make them so i took about a little bit of a break there and i'm going to spike it i just stream the next part here too onto youtube and see how it goes all right so squeezing that bowl up go throw some more oh so this clay this bag of clay is a little bit softer and it's just throwing just really beautifully really nice there we go one more time squeeze and up we go it's pretty thin already down there so i'm not putting down too much pressure now i'm working that baby up to make a bowl like right about there i guess let's center that up a little bit for you guys oh that looks so good we're not even going to do anything else to that that looks awesome so if you guys have any questions you can put them in the chat if you have anything you can tell me where you live or where you are what part of the world you're from my name is john i I am from Portland, Oregon. That's the part of the world I'm from. I worked all over the place, um, traveled uh, as far as like all over the country, United States, Florida is the farthest away, but I also worked in Massachusetts and Kentucky and Kansas. I traveled all over the place as far as 
you know, I work for a couple of years here, work for just kind of chasing teaching jobs because teaching is my other really big passion in life. I love teaching ceramics and art classes. Um, some of you, I don't know if some of you guys were in the stream from before. I kind of talked about those things from before. Just trying to make a really nice bowl here. This one, there's a little bit of a um, kind of a flaw right there that I'm trying to rib out a little bit. I think I thinned it out just a little bit too much, so I'm changing the curvature here, but it looks pretty good. I think on camera, I can barely see it here with my eyes, so I'm trying to figure out if you guys can even see it on camera, what I'm working on. But if you have any questions or anything, just throw them in the chat. If you have anything you want to know, we do lots of different things at Mount Hood Community College, including we mix a lot of our own glazes. So if you have any questions about glazes or glazing, just feel free about to ask about that. Firing, we're mostly doing cone six now out there, but we do still do some cone 10. We still do some, um, some, uh, and we do a one wood firing every year or every term I meant to say. So we just, about three wood firings a year, so. There we go, undercutting that bad boy. Boy, that second bowl looks pretty good. So like I said, I'm making these for what we call Barney's Pantry, which is our food pantry on campus. So we're gonna sell these in a couple weeks. Bowl number two, pretty excited. Bowl number two, oh yeah, we're st we always start off really good. <laughs> First two bowls I made a couple, about a couple hours ago were really good too. This clay is a slightly better shape than the other one. There we go. Yeah, yeah. You have any questions or anything just feel free to put them in the chat otherwise we'll just sit here and throw think about things think about life you know throwing is always a good thing and it allows you to think about other things sometimes or allows you to kind of shut off your brain and not think about things some of the best ideas i've had thinking about at the wheel it's so much fun to make pottery and just to be in the moment. I think it's because I'm slightly uh, hyperactive or some people would say I'm a lot hyperactive. So um, throwing at the wheel is a way that I kind of channel all that energy right into something. And really pottery really changed my life as far as it's something that I could hyper focus on, I guess, is the thing. I didn't really know that at the time, right? So I think I took my first class in 1990. I just knew that I liked it. I didn't know that it was gonna be a career or anything. I just knew that, hey, I didn't know what I was doing and I was, wasn't very good at it at first either, but I just took the class, had a lot of fun. And then I thought, hey, I think I'll take another class. And it was lots of fun again. And then I thought, hey, I think I'll take another class. This was all in college. And then when I was done, graduated, I went back and I thought, you know, I think I took the, I think I graduated with the wrong thing. I think I should have graduated with an art degree. So I went back to college to get an art degree. Pretty fun. It was really fun. The art degree part, I really was committed to that. It was the first time I'd really found something that I was really committed in. So there we go. Um, it's almost there. This is, oh, it's so good. So close. I love making bowls. Bowls are, are just a real fun thing to make. There we go. Yeah, I messed that up a little bit. I was being too aggressive. And I kind of gouged it out there a little bit. There we go. Ah, I'm not making it any better with this rib. John, it's a very simple move that I should be able to get immediately. All right, so then we'll cut this off. All right, cutting it off. Do, 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 do. 
There we go. That's another bowl. Looking pretty good. Slice undercut. So I always like undercutting because that means that there's less clay there for me to trim off. Even though there's hardly any clay that I'm undercutting, it's always good to just even trim off a little bit as a best practice, right? To get that little bit of clay off of there. Also, it helps the wire tool sneak underneath there when I'm wiring it, right? And also watch the way how I remove it. I'm gonna take my fingers and do this, right? I have my fingers out. I turn them palm up and then I stick those fingers underneath like that. Help lift the pot away. This one warped a little because it is a, not quite as thick at the bottom, but I'll fix that later, I guess. When I'm trimming, I can help push, I can help fix that. There we go. Next ball. So we're doing pretty good. That was um, 11 minutes and I've made three. That's a not so bad, Mr. John. Three, I've made three in 11 minutes. That's with the clay already wedged and everything. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm not doing anything like super innovative with the bowls or anything. And this clay is a little soft, so it makes it easier to throw. I better check the thickness of the bottom here. I always do that, especially when I'm just starting off for the day or took a break. Because it's often my notion of how much clay I'm leaving behind gets a little strange, right? So here we go, rising up. There's a little bit of a hunk funkiness in this one. There we go. Look at that. Making another bowl. There we go. There we go. So this clay is good clay. This is our reclaimed clay. So this clay has been thrown once, for those of you who don't know what it is, and then been recycled because all the clay that we don't end up, that doesn't end up becoming a pottery the first time and it gets dried out or trim scraps or something, we end up um, recycling. So there, there's some gloppy clay. Take that away. Always cleaning up the inside, making this look good. So once again, these bowls will be sold for at Barney's Pantry. For Barney's Pantry, which is our uh, food pantry on campus. And students can come by and pick up boxes of food to take home to feed their families. So we're probably going to do that early in the spring term. So pretty excited about that, getting the students involved and raising money for a good cause. Helping the ceramics area, right? We want to have a good influence on good influence on people, right? Do the right thing. And that's the way ooh, we can contribute back, right? To the, to make the world a better place. So we're super excited about that. If you've done anything like that in the past, or if you've done a participate in empty bowls project or something, it's very similar to that. If you've done that, like put in the chat or something, you could do that, but just tell, so we can have a little conversation. Talk about the kind of work you guys make. What kind of work do you guys make? Are you guys potters, the people watching? Or are you guys, um, are you guys just watching because you like watching people throw pottery or what? I just want to know who the audience is. So you can put that in chat. I'm John. I teach pottery at a college here in Portland. And mainly we teach functional pottery, which is awesome because I really love teaching that part of ceramics. It's lots of fun. So here we're gonna undercut that one. So that's bowl number four, 14 minutes. We're doing great. Timing myself, right? So that always puts an extra amount of pressure on, right? When we do this. So here we go. Next one. So if you have any comments or questions about what I'm doing, just go feel free to ask. Put those in the chat. If you want to talk, tell me where you're from. That's always fun. I like to talk about different places in the world. If you're, are you in the United States? Are you somewhere else? I'm in Portland, Oregon, which is the west coast of the United States. It's a beautiful place, beautiful city. It's really nice. 
Um, it's a little bit cold outside, but it, the colding being cold outside is all relative because there's definitely places around here that are definitely lots colder than where I am. Now I'm doing what we call raising, so I'm forming the walls and making them taller. Oh, that one really went really well. This clay is a, is just slightly on the soft side, so it's uh, pretty easy to throw. Really nice. And so uh, younger, when I was younger, I liked harder clay, and now as I get older, I like softer clay. It's just that the softer clay takes a little bit less effort to get moving around in the center, and these like bones can't handle working that hard or exerting that much force anymore. They just get kind of old. I'm getting kind of old, so I can't move that big hard clay anymore. So I move, I just go for the softer bags, leave the harder clay for the younger students and stuff to use. And this is reclaimed clay. So for reclaimed clay, we just give it away to our students for them to use. We don't want them right to have money to be a barrier for against their learning. So we give this reclaimed clay away. It's it's good. It's not as good as the bag clay, but um, it's still pretty good. Like I'm throwing, you can throw pretty good stuff with it. Um, it has a you know just like anything. It's been used before. We run it through our mixer. At school, it has a little bit, it can have a little bit of weird stuff in it. Oh, good. Hi, CJ. Great. Wow, we, you've been teaching for a long time. 34 years. That's like, that's a good stretch of time. So how was the studio? Did you have a full-blown like ceramic studio at the high school where you were teaching? Because I've seen some of those and some of those programs are gorgeous, right? Um, and then, you know, there's a whole range of programs, ceramics programs in high school from where they just have a room and a kiln and some have multiple rooms, right? Multiple wheel, multiple kilns, right? and lots of wheels and hand building space so like when they're talking throwing class like every student has a wheel so they could have like 20 wheels all hanging out in there i think that's the exception normally right for for a lot for a high school to invest that much money into their ceramics program but there are they do exist out there right three four years i haven't wait so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I've been teaching for three. No, I haven't. I'm like at 25 years of teaching now. Now, not full time. I was doing a lot of part time teaching for a while. So, but I've been teaching full time now for 14 years at college, at my college, at different colleges actually. So, so I learned a lot. Set up a ceramic studio from scratch at one place. I showed up and they didn't, it was just a room and lots of boxes full of ceramic equipment. That, and then I had to start teaching ceramics classes in like four days. So we had to put everything together in four days. It was pretty exciting moving into that studio. So that was a brand new program started from scratch. That was at the Paducah School of Art Kentucky, in Paducah, Kentucky. So we got one, two, three, four, five made so far. So we go up, see Daisy. There we go. Oh, I think we're having some internet problems or something. Something's up here. There we go. Raising up and down. Something's up, but it says it's okay. Oh, I'm having issues with my side here. It's like. So, here we go. Opening up. Going to make another bowl. So, that is one, two, three, four. That's five. This is number six. There we go. 
Ooh, you have an L and L kiln. <gasps> Ooh, you. <laughs> those are awesome. So uh, L and L kilns. For those who don't know, those things are are very nice kiln. They fire really good. They're really sturdy. Um, sturdy meaning like they don't fall apart very fast. And man, when you have to replace those elements, they just pop right out, and you can pop them right in. L and L kilns are like really good. Uh, I've been using, we use a lot of Scuts here in Portland. Scuts based here out of Portland. They're also very good. They're really good. And you have some Whispers. Ooh, nice. Oh, good for you. So CJ, it looks like you do a lot of, like a lot of different things, but that's really awesome. Sounds like you have a really good, strong program. Those Shimpo Whispers are really good. I really love them. Um, I know that um, it's, you know, some people don't. Some people want a more traditional wheel. Like, potter wheels is a little bit like what potter wheels you like. It can be a little bit like a like talking to potters about, talking to people like about religion. Like, people have their favorites and they know why and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, too bad. So, my school here. So, that's the part where I'm lucky is we have salt and soda we have salt firing here at my on my campus. So I was very lucky to get this job because one, as far as a university or college teaching job, there aren't too many programs that focus on functional, right? As far as functional wear. So I'm lucky that, cause that's what I love to make. I love to make functional pottery, right? Um, so a lot of college programs are more sculptural based or some are sculptural based. And so I'm lucky that I got a job that's based around that. Oh, you have a Randall. Nice. Oh. Yeah, those Randall wheels are something else, aren't they? They're beautiful. They're built like a tank. They'll last forever, too. Right? Your grandchildren can still be using those Randalls. Uh, we also have... We have a bunch of different wheels. We have some Pacifica at my place. We have um, a bunch of different ones. Now, let me go through the list. We have Pacifica, mostly Brents. We have a couple Pacificas. We have uh, a Scut, right? Um, wheel. We have in three um, Soldner wheels, which are really good as well. The solar wheels are pretty awesome. We love those, except the we have one that's kind of old and one and two. I mean, we have two that are kind of old and one that's a mystery how old it is, but it runs kind of like new. So we love that one. So, and the solar wheels work really good at low speed. Oh. So here we go. Making I'll make a few more before I sign off here. So here we're we're actually making them at a pretty good pace here. Twenty three minutes. Uh, Soldner wheels have a really good. Um... Oh yeah, salt firings. So salt. Luckily, uh, here at my school they emphasize pottery, and one of the instructors, Stephen Mickey, from I think now ten years ago, retired ten years ago, was really in the wood and salt firing, and so he really. So I have on my campus, we run an Anagama we can fire, and we have a, a wood kiln, like a, a single chamber cross draft wood kiln that we can, that we put salt in. It's awesome. And that one fires really fast. That fires in about a day. So we'll start it. Actually, we're loading it next week. So we'll load it on Thursday and then fire it on, start the fire Friday night. And then we salt sometime on Saturday afternoon. It is a lot of fun. So this, and it's great. My students here at the college are really engaged. So they end up loading, doing almost all the loading and firing by themselves, right? I show up for a shift. I help out a little bit, but really it's on them to fire the kiln if they really want to. And we'll help them out if we need to, but if they want to stick all the wood in themselves, it's their choice if they want to so and it's a not a horribly hard kiln to fire so it's a great kiln for them to learn how to wood fire how to manage a um firing 
Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And it's all stuff that I inherited, right? It's not, I didn't build that kiln. It's just was here as part of the program when I got hired. So it was, I stepped into a like ideal situation when I got hired here at Mount Hood Community College. So we have two kilns. We have an Anagama and a like one single chambered Naborigama, which is, which we, which we uh, add salt in at the end. They used to have a soda kiln, but it wasn't up to spec. So meaning that it was too close to the to the main building. And so they tore it down before I got here. And then they never got around to rebuilding the soda kiln or putting on in another soda kiln. So we are short. I wish we would have a soda kiln. That's the next like thing. Um, we have space that we probably could build one in the future. So I'm super excited about that. Right, but we just don't, we just need money because building a kiln is not a easy thing, right? It just doesn't happen. We need money and space. And I'm thinking that we could tear down one of our, we have two reduction kilns. And since we've kind of shifted over to reduction cone 10 kilns, then since we shifted over to, um, since we made the shift over from uh, mainly the cone six now in the last few years, that maybe I'm thinking I could tear down one of the cone 10 kilns and make it a cone six, uh, make it into a soda kiln, I meant to say. But it's a soft brick kiln, so it couldn't just be, we couldn't just dump soda into it. So here. Oh, all right. We'll make a few more here and I will be done for the day. There we go. Whoa, I really went crazy on that one. I made it really thin right in through here. I got to take it easy now. I think this will be the last bowl for a little bit. We'll sign off. All it good. Just moving out the bottom. We'll push this part out a little. Push this part out a little. Push that part out a little bit more. I was a little bit too aggressive at right in here and thinning that out. So it's really weak. I got to take it easy. All right, so we're good. I think that's bowly enough. Let's get this thing going. Okay, let's undercut it. And we can be done for the day. We'll be done for a little bit. Maybe after dinner, I'll come back out here and throw a few more. There we go. I was really aggressive on that on our cut too. Cleaning off the side of the wheel too, why not? All right. Place that baby off, boom.